The following show contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Thespian Talk, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian, and we finally have a three-host show! Oh my god, yes! We've got... We've got the cat. Hello. And we've got the Omega. Hey, I'll do. <laughs> oh, finally, things are just going to start coming together. And then, of course, two weeks from now, it's going to be MAGFest weekend. I unfortunately, not, yeah, I unfortunately am not going to be able to make it. I don't think, Omega, I don't think you're going to be able to make it either. Uh, No, I really wanted to. But the problem is that the Monday of MAGFest is the first day of the new term. And it wasn't doable. And I, I, told, I told my dear lady wife that she should go without me. But she refused, so... Yeah. Next year. We'll, we'll make it next year. <laughs> oh, but I do know Holly will be there, so so everybody who is there, say hello to Holly and give her big hugs and, and all of that good stuff. But she should be here next week, I hope. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Uh, oh, but yeah, so how how, is, how has you guys' New Year been so far? Pretty good, I reckon. It's all right. You know how it goes. Yeah. Although I find it funny, last week, I think on the air last week, I had mentioned that uh, What the Fuck's um, iTunes feed hadn't updated in like a few weeks. Mm -hmm. And it's like right before last week's show went live, what happens? It gets it, it gets updated. <laughs> well, that's pretty Actually. good. Because that's how it works with me. You know, it's almost like it's almost like somebody was listening that, that could have poked somebody. I don't think Kat did. But <laughs> if you built it, they will come. Yes. <laughs> we had to watch that. Oh my gosh, I'm having flashbacks. We watched that in senior year, like the last week. I don't know. I don't remember why, but we did. Oh yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, but speaking of building it, and they will come. I've you know got the website. Website auditions. By the time you guys hear this, auditions will be over. Um, but we've gotten quite a few number of people to audition. I'm actually going to lose sleep over this. <laughs> Uh, so if you're listening to this and you were one of the people who sent in an audition, uh, give me about two weeks to a month to sift through everything, make my decisions, uh, rip, catch up on sleep debt, all that good stuff. And then probably by about, I'm going to say by Valentine's Day at the latest, I'll have a for sure decision and everybody's going to be locked in. And we'll start scheduling people to come on here again and talk to them. Because <laughs> it'll be fun. I've, I've got like got people from all over the place, got... I think like one or two people from Nerdvice even put something oh, in too. Oh, that's cool. So I was like, sweet, we're crossbreeding. Well, we've been crossbreeding. Crossbreeding. We've been crossbreeding since the last time because because <laughs> last time we got like a Lady Jess, she came over, you know, and she's also on Nerdvice, and of, and of course uh, the two of us, and of course just this very show. <laughs> so yeah. we we've been crossbreeding for a while. <laughs> you keep using that word. I don't think it means what you think it means. Probably. Maybe cross cross pollinating. Cross pollinating. Is <laughs> I don't know. It just sounds like we've been up to dirty things, all of yeah. us. Like, well, some DNA has been swapping somehow. Well, you two may not have been, but <laughs> <laughs> oh, but at any rate, um, I've been. I've last week I started this this new segment that's that's just going to be like inbox uh, questions or whatever. I had told everybody to send it to the Thespian Talk uh, ask box. Come to find out, I forgot to open the damn thing. But. <laughs> But we, we did have one astute listener that's like, hey, wait, this isn't open. Oh, hey, look, there's one for the site. Let's just send it there. And, and, and it worked. So, so now if you go and you look for the ask box, that's where it is. It'll be there. It'll be fine. <laughs> uh, but we only got the one this week. And the, the question is, um, do you think that war between the U.S. and China or Russia is inevitable from Anonymous? Honestly, uh, if they're... Jesus, this is heavy. Yeah? Yeah, I was expecting, like, do you like Doug Walker? Tell us about why. What's your favorite <laughs> show? Yeah. Well, you know what? If somebody were to send in that question, I will answer it. But they have to say it in that voice. <laughs> that would be interesting. Um, but uh, war between the U.S. and China or Russia inevitable. I don't know about China. I haven't heard what China's been doing. I know Russia's been being dicks over there what the fuck and by the way i by and and just to just my cover the cover my ass clause i don't mean all of the citizens i mean the politicians 
Well, here's the thing about China is that there's a lot of them, and I mean, I guess if any nation did want to launch a land invasion, China had the manpower to do it. The problem is that, yeah, they're communist, but they like got shit to do. Yeah. You know, like <clears throat> they're going through their like ultimate like you know technology and and economy boom and stuff like that. So they got shit to do, and I think that they're more interested in making capital than making war. Yeah, it's like we want all your money. Plus, your money. <laughs> it's stupid. I mean, if they really wanted to go to war with us, they would have done so back during the Cold War. Yeah, I mean, how I much... think I think invoking our the specter of communist China just makes it sound like you're fresh out of 1989. Uh, just, just, just a little bit there. Um... Ah, God damn. Good, good question, Anon. Good question. Yeah. And, uh, I, I think uh, we're more likely to have a plague in China before we're going to have a war with China. I, I think China will inevitably be wiped out by a plague in its own lack of, you know, adequate infrastructure before they're willing to go to war with us. Yeah. That's fair to say. Especially because some instances of bubonic plague do occur every year in the Gobi, like the Gobi Desert, but like about yeah. like three or four, and not like you know, thousands. Although, from what I understand, and this is probably very simplistic, the, w the way to, to not catch the bubonic plague is just keep your ass washed, basically. Well, it's basically to not... Well, it depends, because the original bubonic plague, it was not to get bit by fleas, because they carried by pestis, which was the which was the actual bacteria. But then bubonic plague can become pneumonic plague when it aerosolizes. So then it's just staying away and from sick people. You know, if you don't touch or breathe in any contaminants, you should be fine. Yeah. But in a country that large, it's pretty much impossible. Yeah, very understandable. Actually, you know what? The rural folks would do pretty good. Because if you're in some isolated rural village and you don't have any contact whatsoever with the large cities, I could see, I could see them doing pretty good. Yeah. Ironically, that's where all of the plague is in China. Yeah, it's in the rural areas. <laughs> <laughs> Every time like, they just have like, it, it's there. It's patient zero from World War Z. Oh, dear. And I love how we're just concentrating on China and not even going on Russia. Cause well, because like... cause Russia is scarily, <laughs> it could happen. Yeah. Uh, that, that the thing is, is it, it could, and Putin is crazy enough, but the problem is that even he knows it'd be mutually assured destruction. So yeah. it would have to be something like we were already weakened. Like our infrastructure had already taken a major hit from something. And Russia decides, well, I'm going to run on in and try to conquer. Which, yeah. again, would be useless. So, you know, I, I, it's a very unlikely scenario as well, but more possible than China. Yeah, but, which... but Russia is definitely pushing in that direction. They are definitely trying to become a superpower like they were oh, yeah. and take over their region of the world. And they're basically just daring us to stop them. It's like, ugh, Jeebus. Because... And you have the EU in the middle just being like, listen, everyone, just, just shut the fuck up. Yeah, you go back to your corner, you build up your things, you stop killing the gay people, and you get over here and you stop trying to demonize gay people so your other people will kill them. You know, leave, leave everybody alone, be nice, and shut the fuck up. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I admit I hadn't paid that close of attention to Russia. All I know is just Putin's being a dick, to put it lightly. Putin is very slowly trying to take back over that part of the world because he thinks he can. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah, uh, somebody's gonna come along and bitch slap him. Just whoosh, stop well, it. evidently it's not going to be the U.S. because we're not doing enough to stop it, and the EU's not really doing much to stop well, him. The problem is that he's got us by the short and curlies. Putin does, and he knows this because he's just pushing and pushing and pushing slow, so so slowly and so subtly that any large-scale reaction from the U.S. would be correctly read by the world as an overreaction. Right. So pretty much we've got this thing where we really can't do much and he just kind of keeps getting away with stuff. Now eventually we'll, there will be a tipping point and even Europe will be like, all right, look, y'all, this can't, this can't happen anymore. Yeah. We don't need another Nazi party. Yes, please no. Please no. Uh, if, if it comes to that, just please no. No. Uh. Well, the only good thing is the fact that, I mean, I hate to say something like this, but he will die eventually. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah. like that, it's like that line from the great dictator. Dictators eventually do die. Yes. Whether it's through natural causes or whether they're yeah. just bombed out of existence or whether they just swallow pill and shoot themselves. I don't know. And, they, they and do honestly, die. that's one of the only things that gives me hope for politics nowadays is that eventually all of these old men 
who are filled with hatred and racism and homophobia and and all this other shit. Eventually, all of those people will die out. Yeah. And, and a It'll new a new era will usher in. Yes. New world order. It will be great. I'm surprised Dick Cheney hasn't already died. Jesus. Yeah, he's seriously old. He's had like five zillion heart attacks. Is he not? Or am I just yeah, confabulating he, that? I mean, well, well, zillion is obviously a, a, a big but, but you, bit of you know thing, what I mean. Yeah. But yeah. It's obviously a made up word. <laughs> But yeah, a, a, a squ just a squillion. That's that's, very just a squillion. that's that's that sounds more accurate. Yeah, I was like, how the fuck are you still alive? God damn, dude. The miracle of modern science. And probably pure Pretty unadulterated much. evil. Mm. Or or that yeah. he, he may drinks, have sold his soul to Satan. Drinks drink baby blood. blood. Yeah. <laughs> Although I, I'm actually reminded of uh, one time, I, I think that like when W was president, he called uh, Putin Pooty Poot. Or something like that. Seriously? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, you know what? At the time, I'm thinking, okay, dude, he's a fucking world leader. You need to show him a little bit more respect. But nowadays, now with Putin being up to it, I don't give a shit. You know. Well, see, with with W, he probably legitimately thought that that was that man's name. Seriously. Yeah, that's true. Like you can fault Bush Senior for many things, but at least he was smarter than his son. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile. Junior gets in there and it's like all those things go to shit, and that's because he's list you know he's not smart enough to make up his own mind, and he's listening to the people behind him that that just want to use him. You know, he was like a puppet. That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking he was a puppet. And everyone like makes fun of Obama's ears, but I think George Bush actually George Bush Junior actually did have bigger ears than Obama. Just saying. I think so. Yeah. Oh. Can you know right the show? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, please. Oh, so. Let's go ahead and hit head up our news stories, because this is this is going to be an interesting one. And, oh and my goodness gracious! Why it's time for the news? <laughs> I'm helping. Yay! Yes. All right. This one is out of Anaheim, California. Hello. Guess what? It's there. not Florida. Yes. Holy shit! A security guard for an adult store in, an in Anaheim recently used a machete to detain an alleged robber, according to the local police department. That's great. A man entered the couple's mega outlet in the 900 block of South Eastlid Street around 11.15 p.m. Friday when a physical altercation with a security guard ensued, Anaheim Police Department Lieutenant Bob Dunn said. The alleged robber grab grabbed a glass water pipe and struck the security guard with it. Dude, no. You don't, you don't know. That could be like, used for smoking kind of, pot later. Like, but here's the thing, though. Like, okay, I know the size of a pipe and I know the size of a bong. And, like, a pipe, like, you could... You can't, it's not even big enough, you're like, eh. I mean, if it was a bong, I could see that, but, like, seriously? Like, dude, what the fuck, man? Uh, the guard then picked up a machete and hit the man on the head. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> security guard said, security guard used the machete to, t to detain the man until police arrived. The alleged robber was treated for moderate injuries, and the guard sustained minor injuries. I would hope so. Let's just, <laughs> you do not like that in the porn store. <laughs> Bam. Damn, it's just... I, I just wonder, what was he trying to rob? I mean, Maybe. was he trying to rob a John Holmes-sized dildo or something? Did he need he was, a doorstop that badly? He wanted a sex toy, but he was too embarrassed to buy it, so he thought he would create a distraction. Yeah, it's like... Unfortunately, that kind of backfired. Yeah, unfortunately, this man was also living back in... Let's see. Oh, let's... I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna shoot for, like, 1990s, 1980s. Mm, no. There's no shame in it, dude. Trust me. No shame. In buying a sex toy for yourself or for your lover doesn't matter also why wouldn't you just order one online if you're that yeah nice? yeah maybe because it's maybe, like comes in plain brown packagings yeah that's yeah. all every website says it yeah he may not have had a credit card that's true yeah they have only had, had like cash or whatever or maybe he just didn't have a computer on his own of his own and you don't necessarily want to be looking at you can get one of those those paypal credit cards now they do, they have debit cards, because they keep sending me emails about it, and I'm like, I don't want that, thank you. Yeah. And you can go to the library and use a computer for free. Yeah, Yeah. but you see, see here's the thing, use a computer, a library computer, they they kind of might frown on you looking up sex toys on a public computer. That's no, this is not true, because let me tell you what, when I used to go to the Chester County um, Library, because I my last job in America, I worked from home. And sometimes, just change it up, just not sit in my bedroom, I'd go to the library to use their Wi-Fi and sit in the nice comfy chairs. And, oh my god, so many people were always, like, you know, accidentally playing porn at maximum volumes, and everyone's like, mm-hmm. 
<laughs> That's literally the only reason anyone uses library computers is to print out resumes and look for jobs and uh, watch porn. There you go. Oh, lordy. <laughs> true, uh, true story. True facts. There you go. Oh, in Macedon, New York. The fuck's that? I don't know, but it's Did you say Mastodon? There. It Ma sounds like it's Mas Mastodon, but it sounds yeah. like Mastodon. Yeah. <laughs> a woman was arrested in western New York after police say she was behind the wheel, drunk on vanilla extract. She probably saw it on Pinterest. Probably. Oh my god, it's so true. <laughs> police say Carolyn Kessel of Seneca Falls was driving erratically in the parking lot of a Walmart in Macedon in Wayne County. The woman apparently told police she had gotten lost on her way home. Breathalyzer revealed the woman's blood alcohol content was three times the legal limit. Police say she was drinking vanilla extract that contained 41% alcohol. That's but I bet her the... breath smelled fucking amazing. I like know, right? Cookies. That whole car probably yes. smelled like a bakery. It probably did. Oh, my God. <laughs> and, you know, I, I, I usually uh, talk about these stories with Becky before I, I bring them on. And I... I uh, said the exact same thing Omega did. Her breath probably smelled amazing. But okay, here's the thing I don't understand. All right, so it's it's this is this, this, this story. It's a similar alcohol content to vodka or gin, right? But oh my gosh, vanilla extract, even the the cheapo Faco stuff, is fucking expensive. Yeah. I mean, it'd be more cost effective to just get drunk off of actual liquor. Maybe that was Maybe. all she had. Maybe. Like, I, I need to know more about this mystery. I do too, because it's like you can get drunk off of vanilla extract. Be expensive as fuck, but you know what? My maybe she had a maybe she had a amazing. Costco card. Maybe. That... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just I need to she know. She bought it in bulk. She saved yes. a lot of money by buying in bulk. Yeah. I have questions. Plus, yeah. she already went through the free samples too. Yes. <laughs> so, would you like to try this? Oh God, yes. It's just like grab oh, the Lord. bottle. Oh God. Oh God. Wait, 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 wait. If you can give vanilla extract and free samples, and they have that much alcohol in them, how do you know we can't like like in like Sam's Club or whatever, you get like little shots of like like bourbon or or vodka or whatever. Get that would be samples. really good because some some bulk stores in the, in the right states sell alcohol, and you can get you can get really good top shelf stuff for actually a lot cheaper than even you could online. Nice. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Because I live walk in one of those states. <laughs> and be like, would you like to try the tequila? Oh yes, thank you. Yes, free samples. I love it. Thank you. That would be nice. Although although you'd have to be you'd have to probably dilute it a whole hell of a lot. You know. you know what you'd have to do is you just have to – okay, in the UK, um, there's little walled-off parts of supermarkets where they sell alcohol. And technically, you have to be over 18 to go in there. So they could just have it in there. We just have to be over 21 to go into the alcohol bar, which it she should be anyway. So there you go. There you go. I'm making you guys money. Just saying. Yay! We need that. Free samples – free booze samples. Uh, I, Good I, on I, that. I know several people who would probably take them up on that too. <laughs> Oh, Kalamazoo, Michigan. Yes, it is a real place. Yes, I have been there. It is actually a really nice looking city. Oh, really? Yeah. A Michigan couple will never forget the guy who married them. He was carrying a gun. <laughs> Dean Lauer and Carrie Stoll were married Friday at the Kalamazoo Department of Public Safety after the county courthouse was closed due to extreme weather. Uh, you gotta, I, I gotta admire their commitment to sparkle motion. Uh, Kalamazoo officer Joe Paul is certified to perform marriages in Michigan, so he married the couple in the chief's conference room before the start of his afternoon shift. That's actually really cool. Yeah, it is. In a statement, the police department says it's pleased to solve another crisis. Now, see, we we have been on this show and, and other shows talking about how much bullshit has been going on with the police, with everything going on. This story right here, I put in here just so we can have a at least one positive news story about the police. It's the feel-good story of the year. Yes, because... Or at least of this week. At, right. least, at the very least. Uh, because, obviously, I don't need to state a bit, obviously, not all cops are assholes, and this is proof of that. Hashtag not all cops. Uh, uh, but spe speaking of cops being assholes, you guys have seen, like, the, the cops protesting in New York City? Yeah! Kind <laughs> of like being douchebags, actually. Yeah. It's actually kind of funny and sad at the same time. And it's like they, they turn their backs on, on, on uh, what's his name, de Blasio, right? Yeah, yeah, de Blasio. Yeah. They turn their backs on him at, at funeral processions, even for their own fallen uh, 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 comrades. 
But and at the same time, they're also like, you know, well, we're not gonna make any arrests unless absolutely necessary. Meanwhile, Good. That's meanwhile, the way crimes are supposed go to work. <laughs> yeah. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but is that not the way that arrests are supposed to work? Exactly. So basically, they're protesting by by behaving themselves. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, thanks, thanks, guys. You're actually it's... helping. <laughs> It's like a little kid saying to their to their mom, you know, and if you don't stop, I'm I'm gonna clean my room too. Yeah. All right. <laughs> on on the other hand, the the city will not be so happy come the end of the month when they don't have any like revenue from any parking tickets or speeding tickets or anything. No, but well, I think well the parking authority aren't they separate? So it's just know. the speeding tickets. No, you know what they should do? They should take it out of the police budget. <gasps> Yes, be like, it turns out that you can function just fine without all the speeding tickets. <laughs> Take it at your budget. I don't know there why I know. used that accent to say that. <laughs> at your budget. Uh, at your budget. I mean, there, there have got to be better Boom. ways to fund a, a police department anyway and not getting, you know, being nitpicky and giving all of these tickets. when really... Make them sell cookies like Girl Scouts. There you go. <gasps> oh, police. <gasps> Please can I make a public can I make a public service announcement? Yes. Real quick. Oh my gosh, you guys. So this is a thing that this year, as long as you can find like a local troop in your area, you can buy Girl Scout cookies online. Yes. This is a thing. This is a th yes. real thing in the world. I'm just saying. Okay. This we, is now I turn possibly you. the most important thing. Very it important. is. Because I have friends with Girl Scout daughters, and if they're willing to ship international, oh my gosh, like everybody in my neighborhood <laughs> is gonna have to put in an order. <laughs> Yes. Oh my god. I think I know what I might be doing a little bit with my next Patreon check. Just like, oh, do we have any Girl Scouts? Oh, good. Yes. Um, you know, give me like a few boxes of dosi dos. Yes. Mine. Fuck you guys. <laughs> Get your we now return you to your regularly scheduled show. Yes. Now that we've we've squeed out about cookies. I just remember that. <laughs> uh, but one of the bigger things that has happened in the past week, uh, the next three news stories do refer to it. Uh, the Charlie Hebdo attack is, uh, uh, cause I know, I know Kat's probably going to have to end up talking about it on what the fuck as well. Yeah. I apologize. <laughs> it's just uh, sad. It's just so fucking sad. Yeah. And it's out of fucking left field. It is. Like, I was up in the morning and I'm up earlier than you guys cause I mean, you're in the US. And so I saw, I, I retweeted breaking news and said, oh, there's a shooting in France. So I retweeted that. And then I went off to go do things and stuff and I was away from the computer for several hours. And to come back and it's like, holy Jesus Christ. Yeah. It's like, damn. So for those who don't know what happened, um, basically a bunch of extremists, and, and, I, and I make make use of that word, extremists, they, they got all upset because a newspaper in, you know, you know, Charlie Hebdo in France was just making fun of their prophet. Well, in this case, Muslims, Muhammad. You know. I think like the magazine's kind of like the equivalent to like Mad Magazine or Cracked or something. Yeah. Yeah, they're not like a reputable news source or anything. There. It's not like, yeah. you know, with CNN. Right. But still, you know, caricatures were made, people got pissed, and then they decided to go in guns blazing. And they did. And... I, I want to say they caught at least one of the guys. I don't know if they got the other guys. I think there was three guys. Um, and... there was a whole bunch of there was like a there was a hostage situation huh? on Friday, okay. and in in a in a grocery store, and I think the guy they the, some hostages were killed, but um they got the guy and they're saying that that guy was related to to the shooting. Oh dear. Uh, and, and all because they, they, they were insulted by their cartoon. Now, here's the thing. Here is some positivity to come out of this, all right? I, I have seen more Muslims come out and say, hey, you know what? These, these assholes over here, they're not with us. They're not helping. Well, the one cop that was shot actually shot execution style with a rifle. He was Muslim. Yeah, I was actually about to bring him up. Okay. Because, you know, you know he, he may not have agreed with those cartoons, but you know what? You know, it's it's the phrase. You know, I may not agree with what you say, but I will defend to the death your right to say it. And that is the best attitude to take towards these guys. Now, these guys, the the newspaper, not well, I'll say the newspaper. You know, the Charlie Hebdo guys, they, from what I'm understanding, also were kind of pieces of shit, as well, racists and and and, yeah. and, and, See, and all that stuff. That... However, with that being said, they did not deserve to die. Yeah, like, I, I actually am kind of glad I didn't haven't publicly said anything about it on social media, because again, it's one of those things where I go away for a little while, and then everyone's like, "Well, I'm not saying they deserve to die, but I'm like, hey, 
Oh, Jesus, that's terrible. Why are you saying this? Because they were, ma they were misogynist and racist. Well, that's terrible. I mean, I can only take your word for it because it's on Twitter. I can't really like look myself right now. But nobody, Jesus. Yeah, it's just, it's just, you know, they they have the right to make fun of whatever they want, say whatever they want. That's fine. You know, we have the right to either ignore them or boycott them or whatever. They're not free from the consequences. However, those consequences should not include being shot. Right. Like, if you don't agree with a paper, you can boycott it. You can speak out against it. But the one thing that you can't do is shoot the place up. Yeah, that, that's not cool. Not cool at all. Uh, Kat, you've been kind of quiet about this. Do you have anything to add before we actually talk about this trio of news stories around this? It's just so stupid that there are people in this world who still can't get over the idea that other people get to say what they want and if it offends you, well, too fucking bad. Yeah. Like, no shit. You know, everything in this world is going to offend somebody, but to take that sort of reaction, especially over something religious, it, it's, you are bad at your religion if you are killing people for it. Yes. Did you hear that? Extremist on, you know, extremist in in Islam, in Christianity, in in Judaism, in Anywhere. Buddhism, in Taoism, whoever, you know. I don't what know that I've ever heard kills. <laughs> I don't know, but I've never I don't heard of like, an extreme I don't like, Buddhist. Like you're, you're, no, you're, no, you're, wait, wait, wait. Well, there, there are, are some Buddhists. are some extreme Buddhists actually, yeah, and I said the same thing too to my wife, and she's like, yeah. Nuh uh and she's like, well, there some of the one in, ones in Myanmar are extremists, and I'm like, okay, and like war torn places like that, yes, there have been extremist Buddhists. So I was like, okay, okay, fine, you win. But like a, a Taoist, I mean, come on, I mean, really? Yeah. Well, to be fair, I'm just covering all my bases. So I know, but I'm just getting this image of this guy saying like, your Zen code made no sense. Ch -ch -ch, time to die, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Not oh, Zen enough. Ch -ch -ch -ch. Oh lordy. Ah, uh, so. So this first one, this first news story we have here, uh, Fox News anchor Shannon Bream on Wednesday pondered how observers would have known that the gunmen who perpetuated the terrorist attack on French satirical paper Charlie Hebdo were bad guys if they didn't know what their skin color was. Oh no. Uh, Bream's but comments. anybody with a gun, it, <laughs> if they're pointing it at you, then they're the bad guys. Yeah, pretty much. Unless you're the bad guy and the good guys are pointing the gun at you. That's yeah, but in that case, case, you already know that you're the bad guy, so yeah. there you go. So You're just Bream, fooling yourself at that point. Yeah. Bream's comments were made during an in-depth conversation on the Fox show Outnumbered about why the terrorist attacks in France provided support for the militarization of police in the United States. What? Oh, hell no. No. No, 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 no. No. Aren't these I the do. people that are always saying that the government is going to try to, like, get all up in your business? Yeah, and 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 what are you what are you saying? Oh yeah, yeah, you are you you're supporting this. These are probably the guys that support the Ferguson PD too. <clears throat> Just saying. But like, I thought that this crowd, like, that was their major major fear was like heavily militarized government police. Yeah, you would think, but huh, they're probably being paid to say whatever you know, whichever Republican is sli sliding them the twenty to say, you know. Oh. Uh, Co-host Eric Balling said militarized police would dissuade bad guys from doing the bad thing they were thinking about doing. I don't that know. I never mean, I think... That has never worked in the but history of ever. Here's the thing. Our police are pretty much already militarized anyway. Like, they own SWAT equipment. Like, a lot of places, a lot of police uh, you know, agencies have been buying military surplus. They are better armed than some of the forces we sent to the Middle East. Yeah, They're already is... there. Which should not be a thing. It should be the guys we send out there that should be better armed than the cops here. Ugh. Co-host Kennedy Montgomery, who just goes by the name Kennedy, noted that sometimes bad guys don't look like bad guys. That's when Bream joined in. That's my question about these guys, because if we know they were speaking unaccented French and they had, you know, ski masks on, do we even know what color they were, Bream said? What, what the tone of their skin was? I mean, what if they didn't look like typical bad guys? And what does a typical bad guy look like to you? Jesus. Well, first of all, here's the thing is, um, anybody can be any religion, so you can have white Muslims, just yes. saying. Actually, I, I went to school with a girl in elementary school. Her mother was from the area, and she went and studied in Saudi Arabia for many years. Met um, this guy, they uh, fell in love, got married, 
And then he came back to America with her, and they had a whole bunch of kids. And so she converted. So all the girls in the family, the, you know, all the kids, they were Muslim, and they were white. Just saying. Happens. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah. I, I'm willing to bet her idea of a typical bad guy is somebody who has a skin color that is bronze that was not provided by sitting on the beach all damn day. Just saying. During his broadcast on Wednesday, conservative talk radio host Eric Erickson compared people fighting his for name health... is Eric Erickson. His parents are assholes. <laughs> yeah, just know, saying. Must be. Well, maybe that's why he turned out the way he did. But he compared people fighting for LGBT rights to the gunmen who stormed the offices of the French satirical publication Charlie Hebdo. <sighs> really? What the fuck? I don't see gay people going up to courthouses and threatening people with guns if they're not allowed to get married. Evil Knievel could not make that jump. No! Like, <laughs> seriously. Well, in fact, I think I see Evil Knievel down there at the bottom of the ravine. I well, think he's dead! Here's the thing about this, and I was talking with my coworkers about this, and I said that sometimes, you know, when stuff like this happens and you hear the right-wing in America talk, I kind of get the idea that they are like the kid whose mom made them stay indoors on the snow day and do homework, Looking out at the Muslim extremists, quote unquote, playing in the snow outside, to follow our metaphor, saying, Well, how come he gets to do it? Like, I detect a bit of jihad envy. Like, I kind of get the feeling that this is what they think that they should be allowed to do. Yeah. yeah. No, that and makes so much sense. It's kind of unnerving. It's a little bit. Uh. They're, they're jealous because they don't get to go around killing people indiscriminately for religious reasons. Except. You know, technically, if, if they wanted to be lawbreakers, they would. But I think there's that little bit inside of them that thankfully keeps that, them That from little doing bit of that. cowardice that I really don't want to be ass fucked in jail. Yeah. Or, or, or worse, you know? And, and, it, and again, here, here, it's not the fear of the police that's keeping them from yeah. not doing it. It's the fear of what would happen after they get arrested. It's the and... fear of ass fuckery in jail. <laughs> yes, because they don't, they don't want to be ass fucked in jail because, A, odds are your first time. It's not going to be consensual. And... Oh my gosh, can you imagine like all these like, you know, redneck Republican assholes and they end up in jail? <laughs> oh God. Everybody becomes somebody's bitch. <laughs> yes. Oh, Lordy. Oh, yes, Bubba's the Aryan mad. Brotherhood Bubba. won't save you now. Yeah, Bubba. I, I think that's gonna, their Bubba's fear. Fun. Yeah. Their racist homophobic fear is getting as fucked by a really big black guy in prison. Yes. yes. They're like, this is everything I, I'm the opposite against. No, you know, oh. it would be really great if the judge, you know, offered, you know, prisoners time off for good behavior, deliberately, like, let's say, are you a minority? Would you like to ass fuck someone in jail? I mean, if you, if you, we'll give you like five years off your sentence. Just, just go to it, buddy. We'll even provide the condoms. There you go. Wouldn't that be great? I that think would that'd be, be great. That would be interesting. I'm a horrible person, it turns out. <laughs> I was going to say, um, now we're going to tread lightly on that, uh, yeah. talk about rape. Um, so but... rape, is not, rape is not good at yeah. any, any time, but sometimes in jail. Yeah. It is, if, if a fucker really is horrible. Well, it's not, it's not, it's not really rape. It's just, um, it's just the way that you guys think that women should be. So there, there you, you go. go. Yeah. They so say that homophobia is the fear that a gay men will treat you the way that you treat women. No. Yeah. Ah, even though, if even would, if it will never happen. If you would like to complain about any of my statements, please email Linkara at. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, poor Lewis. No, that's uh, an old joke. That's an old joke. No, I, I'm just waiting for one person to take that seriously, and then and he opens up his email with this whole big rant that's supposed to be going to you, and he'd be like, what No, the hell? What, what happened, what, apparently what happened, and, and Zara told me the story, was that Spoonie did a video once, and <clears throat> he was joking around. He's like, if you'd like to complain, please imagine he gave Lewis's email address. What he didn't know was that Lewis's email address was part of a family server. Oh, no. And all, all these people thought he was serious and emailed Lewis and crashed his family server. Oh, no! <laughs> so that's what I'm like. If, oh. A lesbian talk will say, if you have any problems with this, please email Linkara at... <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, I don't think... I never heard that story before. Holy shit. Now, it's, now it's, all of our listeners have heard it. Apparently, either Lewis or Spoonie told her a while back. I can't remember, but I think it's funny, so I still use it sometimes. <laughs> oh, lordy. Oh. So, um, so anyway, back to, back to uh, Mr. Erickson here. 
According to Good As You, the erstwhile CNN contributor and RedState.com top blogger was irate that the Atlanta fire chief who wrote a virant, vir, virantly, virantly? virantly anti-gay mm -hmm. self-published book was forced to step down by the city. I heard Good about this guy. Good for them. Mere hours after two police officers and ten magazine staffers lost their lives, Eris Erickson took to the airwaves to make political hay of their deaths and cast aspirations on activists fighting for equal recognition of the rights of LGBT Americans. We've got to talk about the terrorism situation, Erickson, Erickson said. The terrorists were offended by a publication that mocked them, that heaped scorn on them, that offended them and pointed out the fallacies of their religion, and so they had to seek revenge. They had to destroy the people who did it. No, the terrorists are just that. They're just terrorists that, that, that are really thin-skinned. Uh, he went on in, his, in this vein for a few minutes before dropping his gotcha line, saying the so-called terrorists did the only thing they could do, the only thing they knew how to do. They went to the mayor of Atlanta and demanded he fire the chief of the fire department for daring to mock them. No. Well, there are certain things that... Okay, let, let, let's, let's have some real talk, everyone. Real talk. There are certain things that you can't do in the workplace because there are human resources policies that prevent it. And you can say what you want, usually, in your own time. You can, you can exercise your freedom of speech, you know, if you're at work, if you're on your break and stuff like that. However, your employer does have the right to say, while you're at work, here is the way that you're going to behave. And that's not a violation of your freedom of speech. Yeah, because that is, that is part of a contract between the employee and the employer. Yep. It's in your contract. If your contract says, like, like when you go to work for Walmart, you can't curse while you're on Walmart property. You know, oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah, you cannot curse as an employee. It's not realistic, and I'm sure it's not enforced, <laughs> but nevertheless. Yeah. 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 You know, you can't. I, I manage okay because I really didn't have a reason to talk while I was at work, so no problem for me. Um, but, you know, if you're off property and, and you're cursing up a storm, you're down at the local thing cursing up a storm, they can't do shit to you, you know? And some companies have something called perpetual responsibility, where, for example, if you get if you are not on company time, if you're in your own life and you get arrested, you still have to report that, yeah. and you can be terminated for not reporting that fact. Now it won't be an automatic termination if you get arrested. I mean, you can say, "Oh, stuff happened," you know, but you still have to let the company know. Yeah, because that's and that's cool, you know, because that's what you're agreeing to be an employee of them. There, there you go. So you, you have these things, and I'm pretty sure that as part of this agreement. For for what would, what is the Atlanta fire chief to be in his position is to respect everybody and treat everybody equally and help everybody equally. Him self publishing this book that that he claims let's see uh, he, in which uh, he declared that LGBT people are unclean they defile their body temple dishonor God with their lifestyle. Yeah, we worry that if you know, with this line of thinking. If a fire was to break out in a home owned by a homosexual couple, he may not be as quick to go and help them, and that's not good. Yeah, dude, you're the fucking fire chief, not like the Surgeon General. I don't know what you think, kind of swear, well, the fire chief said it, God knows it must be true. Yeah. Even still, a fire chief is a is kind of a public figure. It's not quite a that's politician, true. but it's still somebody who is an authority over other people. Um, and is a little bit of a public figure, at least among other people, like the police chief and mayors and shit like that. Like, that's a position of responsibility, and if in your employment you are held to a higher standard, then you have to meet that standard. Definitely. Now, Reed, Reed did make it clear, uh, Mayor Reed, made it clear that he was not firing uh, Mr. Cochran, the fire chief, for having anti-gay views, but for the error in judgment he made in disseminating them, exposing the city to discrimination suits and, either, and other legal liabilities. See? Oh, yeah, that's a very good point. I didn't think of that. Yeah. Furthermore, in order not to discuss the terms of his suspension during an investigation about the book, Cochran insisted on going to the media and violating the terms of the agreement. Oh, well, there you go. What an yeah. asshole. Yeah. yeah. His religious beliefs are not the basis of the problem. His judgment is the basis of the problem, said Reed on Monday. Nonetheless, conservative commentators like Erickson have seized upon Cochran's story as a tale of anti-Christian oppression, an attack on the fire chief's religious freedom and his First Amendment right to self-expression. No! The asshole violated a contract! Yep. That's it! That's Christians, all he you did. are not fucking being oppressed. Stop pretending like you're being oppressed. Everybody help, help, wants I'm to be a oppressed. fucking murderer. Okay, okay. Shut up! Ugh. Ugh. It's like, god damn it. No, 
no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, I want to slap people. Help, help, I'm being oppressed. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, it's like that, that, that float, uh, cir uh, circle graph, you know, where, where Christian is not, like, 100%, it looks kind of like Pac-Man, and some iterations of it has, has the larger segment, segment that is obviously Christianity, saying, help, help, I'm being oppressed. Yeah. That, that, that's what, that's what guys like this are sounding like. Just because something happens and it doesn't go your way does not make an oppression. No. Guess what? I, I, in this last week, I actually applied for a job. I didn't get it, but I'm oh, not going to be claiming oppression here. I'm just going to be claiming that the job apparently didn't need me, and, and, and I've got a story to tell about that one later, but... Uh, Unless it says, like, Gomer need not apply. <laughs> yeah, I know, <laughs> then right? you're being Then you're personally being oppressed. Yeah, I am not being oppressed. Uh at least I don't think I am. Uh. I just imagine like like a cartoon version of you like showing up in a suit and tie, like coming like da 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 da. It's time for the interview, and there's like a big sign on the other thing like Gomer need not apply, and you're like, oh. Yeah. No, I I wouldn't be so dejected. I'd probably just be like flipping the bird. <laughs> oh. Uh, fuck you too, then. Nobody yeah. wants you. I'm uh, outie. Yeah, there you go. And hey, at least at least I know that that I'm not going to be completely broke, but yeah. You know things and stuff. Uh, Fox News host, the last last one out of this trilogy. Uh, Fox News host Bob Beckel tried to compare an alleged rise in acceptance for for Islamic extremism in France to tolerance for interracial dating in the U.S. Is it, what? Just, what? <laughs> what the uh, fuck? Just... <laughs> I think we've hit a trifecta. It's like, like, what are they gonna like? Ne it's gonna be all about you know salmonella and chicken because that's all you know. It's just. It's, uh... What? It's just, what? what the fuck? <laughs> I was like, okay, okay, we've had, we've had the, the okay, okay, it, it, it's almost a trifecta. Uh, you know, we've had two dealing with race and then a homophobia sandwich in between. So, <laughs> so, uh, and now we just needed one for like sexism or something. That would have been a trifecta. But we're almost got it. Holy like shit. Like when someone dies, it's not just like a convenient chance for you to make it all about your pet issue. It's not like it's, you know why people died in France? Because Japanese people shoot whales. Right yeah. in the face. They shoot them in the face, those Japanese with the whales. No! See, this all goes back to vegans. Yes! Oh, God. Oh. That's what it really boils down to, people. I'm just waiting, I'm just waiting to see, like, one from PETA. Be like, you know what would have saved those people in France if they were vegans, just saying. Like, no! Just, you need oh, to God. not. Don't, oh, God, you're gonna give them ideas. They no. senselessly murder those those cartoonists like they senselessly murder cows and Yes, pigs. that's it. <laughs> Like this is this is how far people are gonna take this. If you're in Peter Rich. Yeah. Yeah, if you're from PETA and you and you decide to use this, um, my co hosts deserve royalty checks. Yes. You better give them to them or else we will come after you. Um, with whatever we can. I will take those royalty checks and I will take them right down to the butcher and I will buy big pieces of animal to roast. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh. So he goes on to say, I think it's sort of like in the United States where younger people today, it's not all unusual for people to see multicultural dating, for example, Beckel told his co-hosts on The Five. Back when I was young, you didn't date out of your own ethnicity. But in Europe and other places, this mingling that's going on here, younger people are beginning to find this acceptable. And that's the thing that's sort of scary because they're getting exposed to it on a daily basis. Oh no. But how other is it cultures. not acceptable? And first of all, there's been like interracial dating since like forever. I mean, I hate to tell you, like, you know. Yeah. Just, just, it's been a taboo here for a long ass time. You know, it's stopped being a taboo since, what, the 60s or 70s? I mean, if, if you want to even look at it this way, for crud's sakes, we interbred with Neanderthal men in Europe. Yeah. <laughs> like, most of Western Europe, 3% of their DNA, from between, all right, between 3 and 13% of their DNA comes from Neanderthal men. Above and beyond interracial dating, <laughs> it's interspecies dating. It's yeah. been going on a long time, buddy. Oh, yeah, just a little what? bit there. What kind of bubble do you have to be living in to to think that interracial dating is a thing that kids are doing these days? Yeah. Like the Facebooks <laughs> and the iPhone things. Like, it's some newfangled thing that only kids these days can figure out, and they're the ones doing it, and that's what's wrong with kids these days. It's, 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 a, it's a new app. It's called Instafuck. There you go. <laughs> They actually do, you know, they actually do have hookup apps out there. I know, I know. Uh, yes, yes, they do. Uh, yeah, but the Republicans only know about Grindr. Ba -ching. 
Uh, yeah. <laughs> this is the kind of guy, you know, I, I, I don't know how old this guy is, but I'm willing to bet this guy, you know, with him being where he is, I'm willing to bet he's old enough to have lived through the civil rights movement, or at least caught the tail end of it. And, you know, you should know better, dude. You should know. It's oh, like lordy. so bad. Next thing you know, they'll be wanting them darkies to come out of the fields and actually work in, like, places with the same as white people. That would be insane. Yeah, the next and thing you know, what? they'll want they'll The general store got a, one of them new fangled the flushy toilets. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Like that's seriously what it, what it well, that's what it makes you sound like. They got it <laughs> wired up for the electricity. Like it's it, it's it, it's like a racist version of Oh Brother Where Art Thou. My my sister got a TV and it's in color. <laughs> yeah. I still only have the radio to listen to my radio dramas. Yeah. Well, hey, guess what? If you just got the radio, you can listen to this easily enough. So just imagine them like listening to like Rush Limbaugh on like one of the big, huge like. Like a you know horseshoe shaped brown ones, the two you know like that's just it. And if they, <laughs> they'll, 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 like when they, when Rush Limbaugh goes to a commercial break, they get ads for like you know flour and you know all of like those things from the 1920s. You know, Ovaltine. <laughs> Yay! You need to, you need to buy Doctor Hospitalis uh, headache powders. They're the best thing for your headache. Now back to Rush Limbaugh. Oh God. <laughs> oh so. So, all right. Um, let's see. What did he say? So, back to France. He... Yes, back so back sorry. to this guy. Uh, uh, there are margins of errors in surveys and polls, however, even after taking these few percentage point differences into account, because uh, they're obviously the uh, Washington Post. I kind of glanced over that a little bit. If uh, the Washington Post determined that some of the surveys, which is what Beckel is going on to make these claims, uh, says the survey's findings don't add up. Uh, according to the Post, if one considers that Sunni Muslims with extremist views would be more likely to indicate support for a group like ISIS, then one must also factor in would an only, only, oh, that only, I can read, I promise, an estimated 7.5% of the French population is Muslim. Comparatively, the Muslim populations in the UK and Germany, which were also covered by the survey, were an estimated 4.4% and 5% of those countries' respective populations. There are margins of errors in surveys and polls. However, even after taking these few percentage point differences into account for these results to be accurate the vast ma to ac to be accurate the vast majority if not all of the muslim population of france and britain would probably need to support the islamic state the post that adam taylor wrote the diverse nature of the islamic communities in these countries makes that very hard to Im Im image i think they mean imagine uh, why would shia muslims support a movement that would kill them for example now, following Beckel's statement, Gutfield and, and co-host uh, Kimberly Gullifoyle appeared to try and cover for him. I don't know if you can compare affection for, ra for radical radicalization to mixed dating, Gutfield said. You don't mean that. I didn't mean that, Beckel responded. Obviously, um, the, smoke, uh, the smoke from his backpedaling is uh, you know, just Shh. kind of thickening as he goes. It was a stretch, but I was trying to find something we could relate to. I think he messed up. <laughs> Yeah. There are two words that are very important. They are causation and correlation. Yes. You can have correlation without causation, meaning that two things are related, but one does not cause the other. And then you can have another C word, and that's coincidence. Like, I think someone, you know, did a whole bunch, and, I, and I've taken statistics, that's what I'm doing right now in school. You know, someone, it was really funny, on, on Reddit did this whole big thing about, I think it was like uh, how the, the rise of a, of a certain kind of bread, it was, it was a European bread that I'd never heard of, is correlated with like every like horrible bad thing in the world, like the rise of Nazism and genocide and all this other kind of stuff. And the numbers mathematically make sense, but there is no actual correlation between those two things. Huh. They are coincidental and they are confounded variables. Now watch some conservative get a hold of that and be like, see? Because they don't understand coincidence. Well, I had to link to it. It was in German and he provided the translation, but still. There you go. <laughs> All right. Let's, let's get off of that now and, and, and come, back, come back to America. Well, keep around America and talk about American things. For those who don't know, I live three miles south of Alabama. Why do I mention this? Because Alabama is on our next news story. An Alabama, ma Alabama mayor and city council have declared God owner of the city they represent. Oh, tell that to the IRS when it comes time, why don't you? Yeah. 
According to an opinion piece in the Marion County Journal record praising the ceremonial designation, Mayor Randy Price successfully pushed city council members to declare Winfield a city under God. Mind you, some of uh, some of other religions, or no religions, might fuss, but if our coins can say in God we trust, we see no harm in acknowledging the Almighty at Christmas, read the editorial, <laughs> apparently written by the newspaper staff. We think that the whole fuss is about cleaning God from the specter of ser public service that has been so... Specter? That specter of public service? Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Uh, has been Said the public servant. Nothing. Yes. It's been much ado about nothing. In the same vein, this resolution may not change the city either, but it will not hurt. And if anyone in Marion County deserves our thanks, it is him for all he has blessed us with, the editorial continued. At least that's how we feel. Price said he pushed for the designation because the nation is in an awful condition, and he hopes Winnifield residents will become more religious if the city is ceremoniously placed under God's ownership. Um, oh, yeah. I, I mean, I mean, I'm just saying. I mean, seriously. Yeah, I mean, just, just... yeah, because um, this is just this. You know, you know, I've seen politicians and and officials. <gasps> no, you know what? I, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what has to happen. Oh, it's, it's Alabama, so there's not a lot of chance of this. But it, next time, there's ice or snow down there. So if you're on municipal property and you slip and fall, <gasps> you have to sue God. <gasps> yes, <laughs> yes. You have to. You have to sue God for for liability to get your medical bills paid. Yes. That would be fantastic because so where literally. Would that go? I can see I can see the state of Alabama taking them to court over this because you know um, you still have to pay you know municipalities still have to pay state taxes they're still you know they'd still be holding to the state so you know if they're there's also oh, although the, the you know God owns this owns the city well God needs to pay taxes yes okay so so real quick I did a quick look Winfield is up in northern Alabama so you very well could have ice and snow. Oh, See, yes. Now what needs to happen is for that town to get hit by a hurricane or something. Yes. I'm not saying I yes. want people to have property damage or potential deaths, but only, all right, wouldn't well, that be beautiful? Only people who are insured, so that they, the, the insurance will, will pay it and they'll be fine. And, like, no one will get hurt somehow, but just, you know. Yeah. Rough the place little, up a little bit. We're horrible. I'm like, I'm like, I think everybody should be raped in prison. And we're like, oh, let's <laughs> pray for natural disasters. <laughs> Hey, why not? Westboro does it all the time. Yeah. Oh, lordy. But, yeah, they, they, they just took that separation of church and state and just kind of shattered it a bit. Just a little bit. And, um, yeah, I'm just I'm just waiting for more from this story. And when I find more, and I'm pretty sure I will, uh, we will have it on here and we will laugh. We will have So laugh. anyone who's just like, if you want to be famous, go have a slip and fall accident in this town. Yes. And then sue. Yeah, it's a little bit northwest from of uh, Birmingham off of Interstate 22. <laughs> Cause, c c can you imagine, if these people are willing to say that God is the owner of the town, how much more they're willing to leave up to God? Like mm -hmm. They're like, we don't need to ice the roads. God will protect our roads. Yeah, see, that's no. why I think they'll get in trouble with the state, because they can easily say, we don't need to comply with this uh, with these you know, state laws for municipality because we're owned by God. You take it up with him. Yeah, and even the, governor, I, even, even the conservative governor is going to be like, you know what, no. <laughs> like, that's probably not a good idea. It's no. But but then when they sue, when somebody eventually sues, they'll be like, look at this oppression on Christianity. It's like, no. You, this you is the bullshit catch-22. You literally yeah. set it up to where God is the owner of your town. You sue the owner. You go after the owner for, for you know, undue damages and, 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 and all of that. You know, that's they're just going by the books, and again, is it, it would not be oppression. So, mm. uh, the next one actually goes out to Texas, uh, because we, we, we just have to have uh, state or local government employees giving out same sex marriage licenses would stop receiving their salaries under a bill filed Wednesday for the 84th legislative session. Titled The Preservation of Sovereignty and Marriage Act, House Bill 623, would prevent same-sex marriage from becoming legal in Texas. In 2005, voters backed the proposition defining marriage in the Texas Constitution as solely the, solely the union of one man and one woman. A San Antonio judge, federal judge last year found the state's same-sex marriage ban unconstitutional, but immediately issued a stay on his ruling. The Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals will hear, will hear oral arguments in the case on Friday. 
State Representative Cecil Bell of Mongolia said he filed HB6. Mongolia? Wait, what? Mongolia. Oh, okay, never mind. The, like, so not the country. Right. I got all excited there. <laughs> like, that's different. Yeah. That yeah. What are you doing in Texas, Mongolian person? There you go. Uh, but he said he filed HB 623 to prevent any federal court or federal action from allowing gay marriage in Texas. You know, okay, Texas, let, let, okay, Mr. Bell, Mr. Bell, all right, let, let me, let me uh, explain something to you, okay? The federal government is, 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 is like your mama, all right? Your yes. mama and your daddy, all right? Your daddy is a breadwinner. Yes. Yeah, well, both in, or in this day and age, both can be breadwinners. But in Texas, right here, it, it's like your bedroom, all right? You can do almost anything you want in the bedroom as long as it doesn't break the rules of the house. For example, you could sit in your room and you could play on your computer all day long. You could watch porn all day long. Who cares? Not hurting anybody. But if you start, say, if your parents come and say, hey, you know what? You have to let the guy in to, like, spray for bugs once a month. Then you better do that or otherwise you're going to be in trouble. You know, that sort of thing. They trump whatever you do. And guess what? If they need you to do something, you fucking do it. Otherwise, things can happen. Like, you would not be allowed to watch your porn on your computer because your computer would be gone. <laughs> Obama takes porn away from the entire state of Texas. <laughs> My fellow Americans, porn is a privilege, not a right, he was quoted as saying. There you go. <laughs> Sorry, I'm loopy. Yes. Oh. The thing is that Texas is always saying we're gonna we're gonna secede, and I'm like, oh, please, please do. Well, we have you you no promise line of, of people who can take your place as a much better state. Yes, come on. Oh. Let's adopt let's adopt some like little European country, you know, like like Luxembourg, and be like, come come be an American state. We'll give you a better deal than the EU, and they'll be like, oh, okay, sure. Be like, no, sorry, they Texas. Wouldn't. They know better. That's <laughs> Sorry, Texas. We've got a new child state. <laughs> we could just, you know, take any one of those little islands that we uh, conquered. And yeah, like American military Samoa bases. or something. You know, we've got Guam and we've got Puerto Rico and all these other places. Well, Puerto Rico is a commonwealth and they could become a state, but I don't think they want to. Because I know it I, comes up they, often, they like do. bringing, if like they brought in D.C. as an official state and gave them representation to balance it out, they'd want to bring in Puerto Rico and Puerto Rico doesn't want to. He says what I've been told. So he, he is on record also saying the federal government is trying to act to create moral standards, and that's just not acceptable. Unless a <laughs> Republican does it. Right, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, it's it's oh, like, you that's... fucking hypocrite. Uh, moral standards. So I, I guess all of these laws against murder is not acceptable, right? All that's these a moral laws standard. against All these laws against child molestation is not acceptable, right? Because right. there's another moral standard for you. So fuck Quite you, honestly, Mr. Bell. I, I think the Fifth Circuit, if you want my prediction, the Fifth Circuit, Circuit will rule in favor. And they'll, they'll have to try to take it to the Supreme Court for next year. That's what I think will happen. If you want the my, Supreme Court my will be like, no, you dumbasses. I think, I think the Supreme Court will not take a marriage case unless it's Louisiana's. Because that's the one. Because Ruth Ginsburg said we won't take, we won't hear a case until one of the federal courts disagrees. And a lot of people are thinking that the reason that Louisiana Circuit Court disagreed was to force it to the Supreme Court. So they'll refuse the others, which automatically um, grants, automatically grants the, uh, the the Circuit Court ruling. So we'll get those other states, but we'll have to wait on Louisiana and the two other states that share that federal court. That's what I think. Ah uh, yes, but. Uh... Now, now, Daniel Williams, a legislative specialist for the gay rights group Equality Texas, said the bill would go against legal president, precedent. rather. Oh, dear. The bill is retreading very well-established precedent here. In 1869, the U.S. Supreme Court decided that in Texas v. White, that no, Texas does, may not ignore federal law whenever it wants. Uh, wording. Uh, beyond it ignoring federal law, it would actually punish state employees who follow the law. So basically, precedent says, "Yeah, you can't ignore it, assholes." And you can't, you can't punish people. States can't punish people for following federal law. It's yeah. that simple. Again, federal law—that's like your parents. You gotta do what they say. And in some, and in some cases, you know, even if your state laws counteract federal laws, they'll look the other way. Here, I'm thinking about Colorado and Washington. 
you know, you know, they said to Obama, why, why, why don't you do something about, about them? And he's like, that's not our priority right now. Yeah, it's just like, you know, well, you guys, we got other issues besides a bunch of people who want to smoke pot and just watch cartoons and eat Wheaties all day long. I don't care. I don't know. What's this? You're driving the Mexico, Mexi Mexican cartels out of business? You're funding your school system? That's terrible, and I'm offended. And of course, the DEA is going to do something right after we watch a show on Netflix. So, yeah, saying. pretty much. After we catch up on Breaking Bad. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I'll take care of you guys. Yes. Okay, our last news story. I know we're we're gonna run a little over this time, but I really wanted to get this in here. Uh, I want I want to say a special thank you to uh, Rosenhacker for bringing this. To for bringing this to our attention, and um, we also want to say, God damn it, Rosen. Um, as with any collector craze, Amiibo are being hit hard by the resale market. For those who don't know, Amiibos, they're little action figures you can get for your Wii U's. You can use them with certain games. You can use them with a new Smash Brothers game. Oh, good, because I read this story and I had no idea what it was talking about. Yeah, I, and I know some other people probably wouldn't know either. It's Nintendo Skylanders, basically. I'm so old, I don't understand what this is. <laughs> basically. Okay, but the resale market, a group of people that buy as many as possible only to flip them for a substantial profit. In other words, scalpers. Right. Most see it as purely, purely as business, but one man's driven by personal vendetta with regard to one of the figurines. What? In an interview with Nintendo Nuggets, a collector of vintage Nintendo items who goes by, by both Daily Dose and Mario Te Plumber, uh, I, know, I know people out there are already clenching, revealed that he's pre-ordered more than 100 Rosalina and Luma amiibo. Rosalina and Luma well, I think they were introduced in, like, Super Mario Galaxy, that particular Mario series. And they've become rather popular. Popular enough to be in the new Super Smash Brothers. And all the other Mario spin-off Mario Kart games and tennis and everything like that. Now, he ordered all of these all because he really, really dislikes the character. <sighs> I do not appreciate Rosalina appearing in almost every recent Mario game to date. I am butchering his voice. I don't care. The fact Nintendo promotes her so much and people praise her is just disgusting, he said. Daily Dose continued, I hate her fans, too. I know for a fact her amiibo will be among the, one of the most popular, which is why I took the time to wait and pre-order over 100 of her. I do not want her fans to be happy. It just crushes me that n crushes me. Nintendo from the good days went to this shit for character designs. While it seems excessive, it's just a fraction of the amount of money Daily Dose claims to have committed to amiibo. He says that he's already spent more than $4,000 and that he has an additional $35,000 to invest on the figurines. Of those funds, he states that he intends to spend heavily on Lucina, Palutena, Robin, and Zero Suit Samus, all out of a similar hatred and disdain that he has for Rosalina. Ah, this guy. So, you know how Chris Chan got arrested yeah. a few weeks ago? Yes. For defacing um, uh, GameStop property and assaulting a GameStop employee, and it was over the fact that that Sonic's arm color was changed. Yes. So apparently, like it, the the console wars exists even in the crazy world because Christian has a Nintendo guy like Doppel, like like he he's like you know like the Dark Mario or the Dark Sonic. You think this guy is Dark Christian? Yeah. Or not dark, but like opposite color. Like you know, like if you have two characters in a fighter game fight each other, one takes a different suit. It's like that. Yeah. Well, there you go. Uh, but this guy also does videos on YouTube. Of course he does. And Becky and I, being the masochists we are, we've seen one or two. And for a guy who says he has $35,000 to invest on all of these Amiibo, he could use a better recording setup. Oh, oh. my God. I mean, just... It's just... It's just uh, Standards, Jesus. Is he a, is yeah. he a conspiracy guy? I mean, tell me about what's, what's going on. I don't even know. I don't even know. But but he has spent videos ranting and raving about Sonic games, about how how they're not as good as the original. And and by the way, what? I drop a I drop a big fucking amount of fucking f bombs on my fucking shows and my fucking pr productions and fucking shit. But um, that right there was just like like a fraction of what this guy does. And it's not just f bombs either. <laughs> But, like, he understands that Nintendo's primary market is children. I mean, they've never, they've never claimed anything else. 
I mean, you know, it's just fortunate that a lot of the games that Nintendo makes have a lot of a lot of cross generational interest. I mean, like everyone I know in the world plays the Pokemon games, and that's cool. Hi-yo. You know, but they have never claimed that they are purely an adult market. Yeah, I mean, just so if this is what little kids want, if this is what's going to sell, Nintendo would be fools not to. Exactly. And as per usual, it's the grown-ups going, well, that's not what my image of this thing should be, so it's wrong, and it should be done away with, and I'm going to do everything in my capacity to destroy it and make other people unhappy. Yeah, you, you Mr. Mario to Plumber, sir, you are a dick. You are so beyond dickery, it's not even funny. I mean, seriously, no. Fuck you, guy. Fuck you. And, And I hope that Nintendo gets wind of this and, and cancels your fucking pre-orders or whatever store you pre-order these through <gasps> cancels yes. your fucking pre-orders because fuck you just because you want to make people miserable because you don't like a fucking character or a set of characters uh-uh, no, that is not your fucking call to make, sir and you here's, the, here's the thing you vote with your wallet by not buying them but here's, see, the thing. here's the thing you're also buying all of these you're spending, what, $39,000 on all of these things that you don't like, you know what Nintendo's gonna do with that money? They're gonna go laughing all the way to the bank and make more. That's what I was gonna yeah. say. I was like, you shot yourself in the foot there because Nintendo's like, oh, well, we made all of these and there's still this huge demand. We made all this money. <laughs> Let's sell more. Yeah, that's how it works. And I actually don't understand how this guy has pre ordered so many of these because. A lot of these are coming in really, really limited quantities, and they're actually overselling their pre-sells. Oh. Um, and there's just been, like, a huge, huge stink made up about these Amiibos, where, like, the the retailers aren't even getting any to sell. They're only getting pre-orders in, and then those are gone in a day. So I don't understand how this person would be allowed to pre-order that many because that would be considered suspicious activity. Maybe by he's going any to sound like retailer. every single like out outlet he can, you know, like getting some off Amazon or going to GameStop or you know, like Toys R Us. Like again, like I said, I hope that every outlet that he is pre-ordered from cancels his pre-order after getting wind of this. I hope, I hope that happens. And then you well, know, like, maybe I he mean, can use that money. To get himself a, a better goddamn recording setup. And uh, again, it's like the only people you are hurting are children. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mo- right, most. I'm not gonna say everyone, but most of the people that you are hurting are children. And why would you do that? Because he's a dick. That's like literally, literally, you you are like one step away from growing one of those little like you know snidely whiplash mustaches and twist like twisting it. And cackling, you know, like, that's evil genius behavior. I will make all of the children who love this character miserable. I have all the amiibos. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah. Or at the very least, you know what he could do with that money? He could invest in a better microphone. I know my microphone's <laughs> not the best. You guys hear you it? You are so offended about this. I, this. This guy's a fucking asshole. But you're just offended about the microphone. You're like, ugh. It does. I mean, it's like, I, I am offended on his, on his setup. Oh, my God. Ugh. Like we said, go just because you're offended. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> oh, but but you know, you know, fuck this guy. That's gonna be it for this week. Holy shit! <laughs> I don't need to throw out my voice because I've got stuff to do tomorrow, and and I want to make sure my voice is good for that. Oh, so with that, we're gonna get out of here for this week. Um, and Kat, if we wanted to find you on social media, where could we find you? Why do you always go to me first when you know I can't remember the websites I work for? <laughs> Oh, well. You know I'm terrible. Yeah, but you're getting better. I'm, no, I'm really not. <laughs> well, you have been on What the Fuck. You, you've been getting better on that. Uh, it, it's only because it's cleverly edited. There you it go. It really is. There you go. Um, anyway, you can find me on Twitter at LabyrinthCat and Facebook.com slash NerdistCat. And then you can find me on my other podcasts, uh, what the fuck on 1201beyond.com and um, nerd to the third over at channelawesome.com. Yay. And where could we find the Omega? Oh, Jesus Christ, everywhere. Um, you can find me on Twitter at the Omega Geek. Um, I'm on Nerdvice occasionally when I do uh, articles for Vera. Um, I'm, uh, you can find me uh, with my lovely lady wife at uh, channelawesome.com for lesbian talk if I can ever figure out how to upload the file myself. Uh, you can find me at RT Gummer Productions. Doo-doo-doo. And I have a .com, the Omega Geek, which I swear to God I'm going to update one of these days, I promise. 
Yes, and where you can find me on the social medias, you can find me on Twitters and the Tumblers at gomer 21 X, and you can also find my stuff at rtgomer.com and nerdvice.com, and of course, these shows also go up on iTunes if you want to go leave a review, all that good stuff, good or bad, you know, because even, even if you say something, I'm like, well, this sucks, and I'm going to tell you why, hey, you know what, I'll take that and I will work it in, most likely. Now, at you least just, you tried. Yeah. Yeah, because cause I do want to improve, but I need a better idea of what to improve, you know? <laughs> oh, so, and of course, on my Patreon stuff, that's going to be in the post-show bumper. Hooray. Um, so I don't have to spend the rest of my voice doing that. Uh, but anyways, thank you guys for listening, and we will catch you next time. And until then, this is Gomer, the Ranting Thespian, with the Cat and the Omega, signing off. Thespian Talk is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Our show's theme is Kick Shock by Kevin McLeod. Find out more at Incompetech.com. If you like this show and want to help support future episodes, head over to Patreon.com slash Gomer21XX. For a contribution as little as a dollar per production, you can get early access to all future productions, as well as monthly Patreon-only vlogs and announcements. Our show's artwork was produced by the talented Becky Hopkins, who can be commissioned by going to Patreon.com slash Becky Hop. Check us out on iTunes or visit rtgomer.com for more great shows.